Welcome to Shorehaven Lutheran Church. This is the 10th Sunday after Pentecost, and it also happens to be Laity Sunday. Chris, Rob, and I are going to do the uh, service, along with uh, Nathan, our videographer, and Beth, our organist. Pastors are having a well-deserved rest and vacation up in Michigan, and uh, will be returning with us sometime during this week. There are no announcements at this point. Any prayers will be offered during the general prayer session. Thank you. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting. In the name of the Lord, is great. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Sanctify us in your truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for today comes from Job chapter 38. The Lord said to Job, Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what was its basis sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together? And all the sons of God shouted for joy. Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out of the womb? When I made clouds its garment 
in thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed limits for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no further, and here shall you proud waves be stayed. Have you commanded the morning since your days began, and caused the dawn to know its place, that it might take hold of the skirts of the earth, and the wicked be shaken out of it? It is changed like clay under the seal, and its features stand out like a garment. From the wicked, their light is withheld, and their uplifted arm is broken. Have you entered into the springs of the sea, or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been revealed to you, or have you seen the gates of dark deepness? Have you comprehended the expanse of the earth? Declare if you know all this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading for today comes from Romans chapter 10. Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. But the righteousness based on faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, Everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how are they to call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, and they said, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. 
We continue with the responsory. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, Lord I, I love, love the habitation, the habitation of, of your house and, and the place where your glory dwells. dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Continue with the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or his maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. You may be seated. In order to understand our gospel lesson a little better this morning, imagine you're driving on the Memorial Shoreway, Ohio Route 2, headed toward downtown. It is a windy, blustery morning, and as you reach the westernmost edge of Bratnall, you see the white-capped waves of Lake Erie. You're driving in the curb lane, and as you swoop down the hill toward the intake of the former Illuminating Company power plant, you see the churned up lake has tossed its waves up onto the roadway. You have a fleeting fascination of seeing cars ahead of you driving through the water splashed on them until you're faced with the same dilemma. Your car is next in line. You have nowhere to turn as the traffic won't permit you to deviate from your lane. The wave hits your car with full force and you are engulfed in water that obliterates your vision. The panic by these turn of events, something that is unexpected. At this point, you don't know the traffic situation ahead of, ahead of you. Have cars flooded out and pulled over to the side disabled? You hope. No, you pray that hasn't happened. You pray for a peaceful outcome. You've just experienced a small sensation of what St. Peter must have felt, a man who traveled on the Sea of Galilee 
many times before, just as you have ridden on the shoreway in your journey. Grace, mercy, and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, from God the Father, our Creator, and from the Holy Spirit, the Comforter that keeps us in the true faith, dear Christian friends. Jesus has had a long day. He has learned of the death of his cousin, John the Baptist. He has withdrawn to a remote, solitary place with a hope of eventually spending some time to himself. As the news spreads about Jesus, the miracle worker, more and more people wanted to hear and see him. It seemed that people gathered everywhere Jesus went. The gospel tells us the crowd gathered to hear Jesus and followed him to this remote area. Jesus took compassion on the crowd and healed their sick. But it was getting late in the day, just a few hours of daylight left. The disciples urged him to send the people away into the surrounding villages in order for them to get something to eat. Jesus replies, they should feed him. And they respond that they only have five loaves of bread and two small fish. What is this among so many, they say. Jesus blesses the loaves and fish and has the disciples seat the crowd. They distribute the food and are able to feed 5,000 men plus women and children who are also in attendance. Everyone is satisfied. Just as miraculous, there were 12 basketfuls of remaining leftovers. As daylight wanes, he makes the disciples get into their boat and shove off to go to the other side where he would meet them. Left alone, Jesus takes it upon himself to dismiss the crowd, and I'm sure in his compassionate manner, wishes them a good evening and a safe journey home. At last, Jesus has time to himself, which he had been seeking earlier, and goes on the mountain to pray. He now has the time to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with his father, to reflect upon the activities of the day and to give thanks. Jesus gives us an excellent example of how we should set aside time in our lives to communicate with God our Father. Jesus is by himself, away from other distractions, and has devoted these moments for some serious prayer. This should be the key to our application in life. The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 17 and 18, pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. The book of Luke has nine separate entries of Jesus praying, and these are just the recorded instances, for there are many more as Jesus prays a lot. Sometime between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., Jesus finishes prayer, leaves the mountain, and goes to find the disciples. They have rowed out about three or four miles from land, but won't be making any headway to the other side. The Bible says the wind was against them, and they were being beaten by the waves. And I'm going to ask you, what storms and uncertainties battle against you in your life? How do you handle these issues? I'm sure there are many, and some of them are unique just to you. God wants to us to include him with all our problems we face. We don't have to go it alone. He is always there to help us. Now this part of today's lesson is recorded in three by three gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, and John, who essentially say the same thing. Jesus finds the boat. The disciples see him walking on the surface of the water and are terrified out of their wits. They see what seems to be a ghost, an apparition, a specter. He comforts and tells them not to be afraid because it is he, Jesus. He gets into the boat, stills the storm, and the sea instantly becomes calm. The disciples are completely amazed by these events. But only Matthew mentions Peter's doubt, saying, Lord, if it is really you, command me to come out to you on the water. Peter is equally unsure of what he is seeing, but he is willing to question and discover for himself, if it is really you, Jesus, command me. 
Jesus says only one word, come, and that is enough to convince Peter. Why did Jesus invite just Peter to come out to him and none of the other disciples? Because Peter asked. Peter is the only disciple who asked to come to Jesus. Knowing Peter, it's really no surprise that he wanted to walk out to Jesus. The other disciples may have wanted to walk out and greet him, but their fears of the storm prevented them from doing so. None of them dared to ask. Peter saw the power of Jesus. He asked if he could come out under that power and strength of his Savior. Peter asked to come to Jesus and waited for Jesus to call him and then obeyed. Peter was a unique man. He was the boldest of all the disciples. He said things that the other people only thought. He was the type of person who did things other people didn't have the nerve to do. Peter was completely drawn to Jesus and wanted to follow him with his whole heart. Peter had enough faith to step out of the sturdy boat and back into the dark as the wind was whipping up the waves. While Peter's eyes were fixed on Jesus, he didn't have to worry about the wind or the waves because he had such a strong faith that Jesus wouldn't let him sink. He could see the power that Jesus had over all things. He knew how much Jesus loved him and that Christ would never let him down. He was doing great until until he took his focus away from the Savior, observed the storm around him, looked down at the thrashing water beneath his feet, and became afraid. He immediately plummets down into the churning waves and realizes his error. He is terrified. He shouts out, Lord, save me, really realizing that Jesus was his only hope of rescue. Now, how many times in our life have we been in similar situations? Going back to our initial illustration of driving on the shoreway, we hadn't seen other cars up ahead flooded with flooded engines pulled over, but we were scared that one might be in front of us. We doubted that God would guard and protect us. We had a nagging fear that he might have abandoned and left us to ourselves. This was never the case, as God is always with us, He is by our side wherever we are. By the same token, we should never be foolhardy enough to do what the devil suggested to Jesus in Matthew chapter 4, verse 6. Throw yourself down, for it is written, I will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Peter came out onto the water at the invitation of Jesus. It was not a foolhardy act. He was obeying God's command. Jesus grabs Peter's arm, hoists him up onto the water's surface, and helps him into the boat. Peter is safe, safe from the storm, and in the strong arms of Jesus. Jesus did not abandon his disciples, but only chided him with the remarks, You of little faith, why did you doubt? Before we judge Peter, remember he was the only one willing to step out of the boat that morning. Much talk is made of how Peter doubted and sank into the swirling water, but few, if any, mention that the other disciples never left the boat. They didn't wish to leave the supposed comfort and protection of even a storm-tossed vessel and venture out into the water. In this case, it, it, to, an even, to an even secure uh, standing next to their Lord and Master. When the disciples first saw Jesus walking on the water, he told them to be brave and not afraid. But Peter had a mixture of faith and fear, and that describes most of us at some times. We may start out with faith. We may begin to do something that we know God wants us to do, or we may have the faith that gives us peace in difficult times, such as in sickness or death of a family member. But then we take our eyes off of Jesus. We look at the powerful temptations, the overwhelming influences, the frightening circumstances around us. We begin to doubt whether God actually has the power over these situations or if he cares enough to help us. We may stop doing what God wants us to do or we may be so overwhelmed and frozen with fear. 
Jesus rebukes us as well. He says, see me, see who I am, see my power and authority, see my grace to forgive and redeem. A lot of situations are too big, alarming, or overwhelming for us to handle by ourselves, but nothing is too big for God. Don't focus on the current situation you are in. Instead, focus on the one who has power over every situation. And what a blessing it is to have. The creator of the universe has the power over all things, is crazy about you. In 1 Zephaniah chapter 3, 17, the prophet says, The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves you. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. God wants to do what is best for you, but will rejoice over you with singing. And it's just important he is able to do just that. Focusing on that truth should give you peace. The truth should give you the confidence to step out of your seemingly secure boat and do what he wants you to do without any fear. We may ask ourselves, as the psalmist did in Psalm 121, verse 1 to 2, where does my strength, my help come from? My strength and help come from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He and he alone comforts us and comes to our aid. No one's faith is perfect. If you stumble, if you have a doubt like Peter did, Talk to God about it as in Mark 9, 23 to 24. Jesus says everything is possible for one who believes. The father of the boy, possessed by an unclean, impure spirit, replied, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Our Savior never changes. Just like Jesus reached out his hand and grabbed Peter to keep him safe, he is that close to you and he will keep you safe as well. As it says in the Celtic poem, may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you from the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing through heaven's gated doors. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon, with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Christian Church, here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, especially for our school districts and their decisions for fall education, and we pray for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather, for the fruitfulness of the earth, and for those traveling, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, especially we pray for those who serve in the health care fields. Lori Combs, Stacia Hackman, Joy Markle, Kim Murphy, Darlene Palumbo, Janet Polensky, James Roth, Sue Ryan, Kristen Smiley, Holly Trevarthen Clark. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and dying and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Patty De Benedictus, Patrick Gum, Carol Keller, Amy Kissel, Elaine Lockhart, Ann Melnick, Robert Melnick, Werner and Barbara Muse, Greta Pate, Joan Pollard, Carl and Diana Roth, Sherry Pollock, Debbie Reed, Ron and Karen Swift, Sharon Tizano, Todd Trevarthen, Bonnie Voigt, Joanne Galwitzer, Paul and Val Valerie Kozel, those under cancer care, those under treatment for COVID-19, and those who are transitioning in employment and or residence, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty and most merciful God, preserve us from all harm and danger that we, being ready in both body and soul, may cheerfully accomplish what you want done. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Continue with Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless us and preserve us. Amen. We continue with the closing hymn, Eternal Father, Strong to Save. 